Hey everybody, welcome to the video. This is Bellatrix. She's a new addition to the Ben and Media family. Say hello. Hello. Well, this video itself is about the other love of my life, my Canon 80D. And is it still worth having it in 2021? <laughs> Let's go and find out. Come on, beautiful. What's up everybody, welcome back to another video here at Ben & Media. My name is Nathan, it's an absolute pleasure to see all you here today. Oh, really good coffee. Right guys, before we get started, just gonna ask you, if you haven't yet already and you do like the content and you do want to see more of what we do here, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell notification, that way you can stay up to date with everything that we do here at Ben & Media. And if you like this video, hit the like button because it helps with the algorithm. So, what we're gonna talk about this video is that we're gonna talk about the Canon 80D and is it still a worthwhile camera for 2021? Now the Canon 80D was the first camera and pretty much the only camera that I sort of own. I've got the vlogging camera, which I am vlogging with here and I've got my action cam and this, that and the other. And do I want to upgrade it and am I considering a new camera and what will I do with this camera once I have done? These are all questions that we're gonna ask and see if we can sort of push forward. But first things first, is the Canon 80D still a good camera? The answer is yes. Full stop in the story, no other questions need to be asked about that one. Now the Canon 80D did come out in March 2016 and I bought this one in late 2017. So it was quite, you know, sort of not new, but then again, not quite old either. And when I bought the Canon 80D, it, I had no clue what I was picking. I didn't know what type of cameras they were. I didn't know the difference between mirrorless and non-mirrorless and anything like that. The main focus on me buying this camera was how good the recording was, because my main focus was to make video. It was to start the YouTube channel, it was to shoot maybe short films on it, and it just so happens that as a stills camera, it is still one of the best cameras going. One of the best things I do like about this camera now as a photographer is the 24.5 megapixels that it has and the recording and the recording capability on this is 8010p and I think the maximum frame rate is about 60 frames per second. But the question is, even though it is what, five years old now, is it still a camera that we can still use in 2021? Now obviously 4K is a huge thing in this day and age. Everyone's shooting 4K and we've even gone up to 8K with some cameras now. And I'm probably gonna try to compare it to my dream camera, the camera that I really, really, really want, which is the Canon R5. Love the Canon R5, love the specs, would love to take one out for a test run, but you know, at a price tag of the best part of four and a half grand it is slightly out of my price range. Now, if you do in fact Google, is the Canon 80D a good camera for 2021? This is one of the answers that you get. It's an older model, but it's still a flagship of the Canon crop sensor range. You get a narrow dramatic range and revolution. In exchange, it offers you the best autofocus you can get in this price range and great image quality. The build, is, the build quality is also much sturdier and you get a larger camera. So there we go, it's still a flagship camera within the Canon crop sensor range. Now, obviously the R5 itself, it does offer a full frame range. It is a 45 megapixels and it does shoot in 8K RAW, which, you know, 
in five years, how Cannon has just gone vroom up to the very, very top of the line. You can't really knock it. But again, that is what you can buy now. But for the Canon 80D itself, the stills on this are brilliant. I never bought this to be a photographer. I wanted it to be a filmmaker. But in the last 18 months or so, it is me progressing as a photographer. And some of the photographs that I get from this camera has really made me fall in love with the craft, with the sort of the, the beauty of photography. And it is perfect for everything. It's got a fantastic autofocus, which it does say. It can literally pinpoint any part of it, dependent as well on your aperture also. The dramatic range between the subject that you're trying to get and the background, again, is absolutely spot on. Recording wise, obviously you only get 1080p with the Canon 80D. So it means if you are trying to play with 4K footage, you're not gonna get this with this camera and you need to go for the more modern cameras going forward. But the thing is, way I look, why 4K is better than 1080p, is of course you get better in image quality. But in situations like this, when I'm trying to make a quick cut, because quite frankly, I made a mistake talking, or I go, um, ah, uh, a lot, which I do in my videos when I try to remember my scripts, I like to do a quick cut inwards. Now, if you got 4K, when you cut inwards like this, the image quality is better you know, because you're picking up more information in that as well. But it's not too bad with the 1080p that it looks absolutely terrible. Now I am shooting this, can this video on my Canon G7X. Again, it's a mirrorless camera. It's not the best camera for doing these type of videos. That's why I generally use it as my vlogging camera or I use it as my sort of B-reel camera. Why I use this to shoot the majority, if not all of my other videos. It is a interchangeable lens camera, which is, again, if you are a professional photographer and you want to get more lenses and this, that, and the other, again, it is one of the best cameras you can get out there. Now, price range, these are still regarded as one of the best cameras, and you can tell by the price itself. Now, secondhand, you could probably pick one of these up for around about 450 quid on eBay or other sites like that, but brand new, because they are still making these. You pick these up for around about minimum, I think I found online this afternoon, for about 750 to 800 pounds. And that, for a starter camera, can be daunting to somebody who's just sort of starting out. But it also goes to show just how sturdy and how good this camera actually is five years later. Even though Cam Canon themselves have progressed and they've gone into 4K and the megapixels are going through the roof, it is still classed as one of the best cameras you can buy for a beginner. And I generally say that. When I see on my Facebook groups or my Instagram, like, oh, what camera would you start out with? What camera is this? What camera is that? I would always recommend the Canon 80D. It is a good camera. It is, even with the Canon 90D, I would still say, because I've used it, that the Canon 80D offers better quality, it's a better bodywork, it's a better framework, and you feel like with the grip and how you can hold it, it still feels very, very hefty. Obviously the choice is down to you. Like I said, when I first started out trying to look for a camera to use, I had absolutely no idea what to buy. I looked at how much I could record, I wasn't really interested in stills quality, and yeah, First thing I done is that I picked a brand. It was between Canon and Sony, and I just sat down there and went, right, I asked a few of my friends who are photographers, and the majority of them said Canon, so that's why I chose the Canon. And I'm not gonna recommend the Canon 80D towards you. Probably yes. If you are starting out in photography, give it a go, give it a crack. It is a sensational camera to start off with. Of course, if you're not a fan of it, it's entirely up to you. Choose what you feel comfortable with. If it's not in your price range, you want something a little bit lower, you don't even like Canon, that's entirely up to you. I'm not in charge of you. Do what you feel comfortable, but I will always recommend this particular camera. What do I want to do after I look to upgrade? Like I said, the camera that I really want is the R5, but like I said, you know, at four and a half grand, that is still quite a lot of money, and it's not even a year old yet. Some people say the R6, which is something I don't need. I don't need that much range. Now, the R6 is definitely superior to the R5, but again, I've not actually tested them yet. I've not given them a go, so I don't really know. But the R5 is something, as you look down, is what I'm looking forward to. So what do I plan to do with this as and when I sort of move forward? For me, this is a brilliant camera. 
I will continue to use it until it stops working or until I find something which is makes this such a dinosaur which I can't see happening in the next four or five years. But because this is the camera that started it all with me, because this is the first camera that I bought, this will never ever leave me. I will eventually probably put it on a mount, stick it somewhere on my desk, hopefully in the Hollywood Hills where I'm this big, huge executive, actor, producer, yada, yada, yada. But guys, if you're looking for a budget camera, then maybe find something a little bit lower than this. But if you're looking for a startup camera that you have a decent budget for, Canon 80D is definitely one for you. This isn't obviously a breakdown stats review. I'm not a stat person. I don't sit there and look at the nitty gritty of what it can do this, that, yada, 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 yada. I like good quality cameras. I like something that holds, feels good in the hand. You can hold it handheld, all this. And it's just a brilliant camera. Full stop in the story. This is a love letter for the Canon 80D because I still believe it is still a top, top camera even though it is currently celebrating its fifth birthday. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the content and I hope you enjoy the channel. And like I said, if you haven't already, who wouldn't mind subscribing just down there, that would be awesome. And hitting the like button because it helps us out on the channel. We are hitting a huge milestone in the next video. It is the 100th episode. So, you know, let's look out something a little pretty cool for that. Now that the little baby has been born, I should hopefully get back out into the city in the next week or so. So a POV or a street photography photograph, street photography video will be coming out very, very shortly. But guys, thank you for all the well wishes that we've had on social media. Mummy and baby are doing absolutely fine. Life is slowly getting back to normal or as normal as you can. But I will say that Skull Crusher Coffee is helping me out so much. Uh, sponsor me if you guys are knocking about. I love your coffee, it's sensational. And um, yeah, till next time guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye for now. Mwah, 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 mwah. Hello, me again. You thought it was the end of the video, but the Jelly Belly here wanted to also be in this video, so this is Lysander. This is, he was just constantly having a go just down here. I know, right? Hey, say hello to everybody. Hey. Well, you got to tell them to subscribe, hit the like button. Yeah? Uh. Like, see? Uh. If you don't like this video and subscribe to the channel, he can't have an education. <laughs>